Hello guys, so for today we'd be doing a quick game review. So the game we'll be um, reviewing for today is The Beacon. So if you guys are familiar with uh, dungeon, dungeon Crawlers actually. But before we go into the game, let's talk about the producers which is Treasure. So Treasure, or as they say, the decentralized Nintendo, so is building the decentralized game ecosystem to transform game publishing. So they have three points: games, community, and infrastructure for games, uh, built from the ground up by Treasure and seasoned builders, all connected by magic. So I'll delve into magic in a bit. Community, it's a composite of many smaller communities, connected through lore, guilds, resources, and of course their token magic. And lastly, the infrastructure, the shared economic engine, tooling, and resources that powers the ecosystem and empowers builders. So, all connected by a dual resource model, which is magic powers everything, and NFTs as composable resources. Alright, so let's talk about magic. So, magic as a currency. So, it's a currency of the treasure ecosystem that serves as cross-metaverse monies within the common economic layer. Magic was designed to be increasingly scarce as it weaves an ever-growing web of narrative bridges within Treasure's ecosystem of metaverses. Players are able to earn and use magic through playing Bridge World, one of the Treasure's flagship products, and other game cartridges like what I'm gonna be reviewing now, which is the Beacon. And staked magic in the Atlas Mine also enables holders to govern the broader Treasure ecosystem, so magic also has staking. And now let's get into treasures. So treasures as resources. So basically treasures uh, here are in a way in-game items. So they're magic infused assets with varying uses across bridge world and the rest of the treasure ecosystem. Just like in bridge world where whenever you'd complete a daily quest, it will give you around two to three items per daily quest. And beyond treasures, resources from other games also exist to create bridges between game worlds. All reinforcing treasure thesis of true and novel form of interoperability. So, yes, as we said, uh, actually as the site said, uh, they have more games. So let's check that out. So, yes, he of course, the Beacon, Kuro, Tales of Elaria, Battlefly, Smallverse, Bridge World, Realm, and Knights of the Ether. So you guys can check that out in their site. But before that, uh, let's take a look at their team. So basically, uh, these are a collective season builders growing the expansive platform and the centralized game console that is Treasure. So Treasure comprises a globally distributed team of developers, product managers, artists, brand builders, marketers, economists, and gamers, all supported by a intimate and vibrant network of DAO contributors and passionate community members. So we can see here these are the founders, so John Patton Garp and Carl Vong. And for Treasure, these are the team members. You can see their positions and their names there, also their Discord and Twitter for Trove, Bridge World, and the rest. You guys can find these all in their site, which is treasure.lol. So, yeah, that's it about the background of Treasure, their games, and magic, and basically anything that has to do with their ecosystem. And now, back to the game. So, two things. Two things to talk about. First, um... Uh, this game has a daily quest system so other uh, two daily quests which is the tavern quiz and the dungeon so for the tavern quiz you're gonna talk to this npc called igor and he's gonna ask you a random question um about anything in the tavern actually so uh, the first time you talk to him, he's gonna ask you a question and a text box will pop up where you type. So of course, you won't really know the answer there and then unless you're lucky or you played this game before. And um, after you answer wrong one time, you can then move around and talk to the other NPCs. 
So these NPCs will either give you hints or actually tell you the answer straight up, which was a really cool thing. And by doing so and answering correctly Igor's question, you'd be rewarded with items. These items can be sold in the marketplace. And by the way, um, in order for you to earn items, you need to purchase one of the characters. So right now, it's the founding characters that are currently listed on the market right now. And the currency they use is magic. So magic right now, I'm checking, uh, is around a dollar and 80 cents per magic token and the floor price is around 16.79 magic or 17 rounded off and so i've i've hooked myself up with two characters so the rough hunter and a tree chasing right now i'm using the rough hunter which i'll be doing the daily quests with so yes moving on to the second daily quest which is the dungeon so uh, if ever you guys are familiar with uh, dungeon crawlers, um, these uh, this daily quest will let you run through three floors of the dungeon with uh, randomly generated. It's a randomly generated set of floors per day, and also take note that even if you fail your first try, it will let you try and try again until you complete so the daily quest will only count once you complete so you can try as many times as you want and with this run it was uh there were two uh types of in a way missions for the floor so f the first floor which i was presented with was a uh, get to the exit of the floor in around a minute or 30 or it was a timed kind of floor so i had to reach the end by a certain time limit or i would fail and the second floor was kill around 15 uh mobs uh, monsters per se and uh, that would cause the exit to be unblocked so that i could progress to the third floor the third floor was also a timed exit but it was really challenging and as you can see in the gameplay footage i've died quite a lot and had to restart so many times but overall it's a really fun game it's easy to get into and you can sell all the items you earn but also take note it's all it also says in the character selection or at least a site in the portion of the character selection Sending your character into a game also, of course, costs a uh, costs a uh, small gas fee, which I think is not that expensive at all. So you gotta get some extra funds ready, um, just for that gas fee. And overall, I I think I really like I really like this game. The art style is really cute. The characters are diverse, and it also gives you the option to keep these items to make your character stronger or sell them in the market so yeah this is my game review for the beacon and i guess i'll see you guys in the next one